Around three to 200 million years ago, all the continents were stuck together as one big landmass. Over time, they moved apart and formed the continents we have today. That giant landmass was called Pangaea, and the Earth looked very different back then. Which begs the question, what would our life be like if that split never occurred? Well, let's find out. In simple words, tectonic plates are big chunks of the Earth's outer shell. Our planet is like a puzzle of landmass, and these plates are the pieces. Since the Earth is so incredibly hot inside, its heat influences the rocky ground above the core. Slightly melted rocks start floating in the ocean of scorched magma. This movement creates the tectonic plates, and they're always moving, just really slowly, which is why we don't notice it. Their movement has been a fundamental force shaping the Earth's surface, climate, and the evolution of life over millions of years. For example, when two plates bump into each other, one might go under the other. Or they might slide past each other. Sometimes they pull apart. All these movements create things like earthquakes and volcanoes. And when plates push against each other, it can make the land go up, creating mountains. So, the big mountain ranges on Earth, like the Himalayas, formed because tectonic plates were pushing into each other. Now, here's the thing with Pangaea. In a supercontinent, all tectonic plates are united, and they don't really move. Well, at least not a lot, like they do now. So, if Pangaea remained intact for billions of years, everything in our world would look completely different. For example, we wouldn't have many mountain ranges anymore. No Alps, Himalayas, and Andes. What a nightmare that would be for ski lovers! But there's an upside to that too. No continental drift means much less disasters in our world. All our earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions would be much rarer and calmer, or might not occur at all. However, hurricanes would keep existing, and they could be crazy strong. With Pangaea being one huge lump of land, the rest of the world will be water stretching from the west to east. That's just a free water slide for a hurricane. Please feel free to build up an intensity without anything to bump into. So once it finally reaches us, prepare for Category 5 or even stronger hurricanes or tornadoes. They'd be regular visitors too. And if you decided to live in eastern Pangaea, yep, you're doomed. The way the continents are arranged also affects how the oceans move and the weather behaves. In Pangaea, the climate would be very different across the globe. The middle of our supercontinent would be super weird. Right in the center, we'd have a huge dry desert. But there would also be dense, cool rainforests along the borders of this desert. Why? Because Pangaea is so massive and rain from the ocean wouldn't reach far enough inland so it would be stacking up around the edge. This would make some parts of the land not so great for… anything. Rain and water would wear down the land, flattening hills and carrying away soil over a long time. Eventually, Pangaea might even shrink and disappear underwater. Closer to the edges of Pangaea, the weather might be more mild or tropical. Up north, it would be warmer than it is now. And finally, we'd have some understanding of seasons, but we'd have no idea that it becomes harder for you to breathe as you go higher. So, how would all this affect living things? Well, bad. Pangaea would be awful for the variety of life on Earth. History shows that having separate pieces of land is very important for life. It was a big reason why new kinds of species appeared. For example, Madagascar, an island that broke off from Pangaea, was isolated for millions of years, which is why it has many plants and animals not found anywhere else. Fewer isolated lands, like Madagascar and Australia, mean less cool and unique plants and animals. The climate problem doesn't go away either. Almost all Pangaea would be hot and dry inside, but it wouldn't be all too boring. There would still be some environments for animals to live in. Reptiles like dinosaurs might do well in this kind of climate. That's one reason why dinosaurs thrived when the whole world was one big landmass before mammals came around. Also, 
This might push for the development of creatures that can live in water. They'd be more diverse and bigger in size. So basically, Pangaea is a master of creating Earth as dangerous for humans as possible. With all this in mind, let's finally see how humanity is doing, assuming that we survived and evolved. First of all, where would your country be located? In theory, you could take a road trip from Brazil to Canada because they'd be part of the same huge landmass. North America would be right here, and Europe would be just east of it. Most of Asia would be up north, and Antarctica would stay down south. Australia would still be in the middle of nowhere. A literal Antarctica would be closer to everyone than Australia. That's assuming that countries stayed the same. And hey, cool news! All our modern countries might not exist at all! Okay, that didn't sound as good as intended. More precisely, the countries would have completely different boundaries, and the world would be much more peaceful and united. Let's see. First, we'd form some tribes. But since we would share the land, we'd have to compromise. We can't all have the only coast or only inland regions. Each tribe would probably get a fair piece of the land so that everyone could meet in the middle to settle problems or make trade agreements. As tribes got bigger, people would move to new lands, separated by deserts and forests, forming their own nations. The hunter-gatherer era might take some more time, since we have fewer animals and plants. If we started hunting, we'd probably wipe out all the big animals pretty quickly. Except for the ones we could potentially domesticate. Imagine having dinosaurs as pets! But the whole supercontinent would quickly enter the agricultural era. Because whatever technologies we discover, we'd share them with each other right away. The main difference would be that during our age of exploration, there would be mostly small, isolated islands to discover. Travel and trade would be easier too. Cultures would be less distant from each other compared to our world. For example, right now, Native American culture is very different from Pacific Island culture because they've been separated by water for a long time. But on Pangaea, cultures might form a continuous line from the southern tip to the northern tip, which means all cultures would be very closely related. And that wouldn't be the only similarity. Our appearances would be very much alike as well. Since Earth is still tilted on its axis, the very north and south will stay cooler. So even though some people would still have white skin and blonde hair, in general, everyone would still have less melanin. Around the central part, where the sun is always shining, most people will still have dark or tanned skin. This could create a more similar world where people could see themselves as global citizens and earthlings. The sad part is, we probably wouldn't be as motivated for technological progress as we are now. All the land is already known, there's no need to explore. The weather is mostly good and warm. The crops are growing well, the neighbors are hopefully peaceful, which is why humans would be fine with things as they are. We'd probably stick to basic tools and science. Of course, we're naturally curious creatures, so we'd still have some progress. It just would be very slow compared to our world. What sounds boring for some might sound awesome for us. Our life would be less exciting, but we'd be more united and peaceful. Maybe, in a world like that, we learn to treat each other with more kindness and love. But we can only imagine. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.